So I have very hastily prepared a wrap up of code beams, which was two weeks ago now. Play. Can everyone see that? I'm getting nods. We can online. Oh, my mouse cannot now find the. I don't know how to move that bar now. That's really annoying. Thanks, Zoom. You're awesome. All right. So basically, this is just a bunch of pictures I took. Um, so this was the crowd. It wasn't quite as big as I thought it was going to be. There's probably 120 people there. I think they said there was sort of 150 plus and then a bunch of people online. Um, we were at the Computer History Museum in San Jose, which was an interesting venue. This main hall was the main sort of venue for talks, but there was another one that was sort of attached to the, like the big area and the lunch area. Uh, it's a good venue, except I didn't get to see any computers or any history of computers, which made me sad. So they could have included that as a theme. Um, Dave Lucia did an interesting talk on time scale DB. Uh, which is a time series database that is well worth looking into if you have a time series data problem. Um, it has this idea that of the hyper tables, and it's effectively just Postgres, and it's an extension, a Postgres extension that upgrades a table into a chunkable, compressible time series aware table or the hyper table. So, yeah, like just a summary. Um, it's an interesting talk when the videos come out, it's worth checking out. Um, so yeah, it is just Postgres and you install it as an extension. And then any table that is a hyper table kind of gives you time partition chunks and a whole bunch of utilities to deal with that, as well as compression to make sure that, you know, you don't have infinite amounts of data that compresses old things, keeps aggregations around and sort of stuff like that. So yeah, check that out. That was pretty good. Um, guy called Carlo, who you may have seen for, I watched him actually draw these, uh, what are they called? Visual aids or visual summaries of the talks. He only did about sort of half a dozen of them, but just watched him draw this. I don't know how he actually knew the layout ahead of time and actually captured it. Pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and there's a few other ones. This was a talk that was probably a lesson in why not to do a double person talk. It was like, it was like two talks into lead because uh, almost ironically validating the talk title. Um, but it was really, you know, a sort of a call out to the community to, you know, work together to, you know, provide a coherent set of tools and so forth. Um, and I think there was some practical things in there, but it was really sort of high level. Um, we've got things in the way here, but that's Andrea Leopardi, who's working at Apple. Just trying to remember where he works. He works in the supply chain management because they're trying to do net carbon zero by 2030 kind of thing through their supply chain. He was talking about what's happening in Elixir. I, I don't think for anyone who's following along, there was anything new. He did talk about the partition supervisor in sort of detail um, as a way to sort of scale out blocking uh, supervisor processes. Um, if anyone's heard of Crichton, Boyd Malter, who wrote Scenic, uh, and has been sort of banging on about SEL4, which is a very, well, it's a formally verified, formally proven, secure microkernel. Um, and his whole deal was revealed um, by you know, a couple of other employees there. But they've been effectively building Beam and adding extra stuff to make it completely secure to work on a secure microkernel with SEL4. Uh, which is a pretty exciting thing. And his idea with that is to make sure that you've got highly secure um, IoT devices 
for example. So the use case for that is utilities, energy, water, things that might be targets for nation state hackers, for example, uh, if you wanted to take over someone's water supply or do something like for blackouts or what have you, or do other nefarious things. His goal is to sort of stop that using the beam, but also using this SEL microphone. Um, and what was interesting about this was it had sort of blast radius. It took everything out of the, the OS kernel and put blast radiuses around things like the clock, logging, all of your drivers, where if there's any issues in those drivers, typically that would crash. Uh, the operating system will cause problems or allow entry for hackers to come in uh, and exploit sort of things at the OS level. And Beam is quite insecure if the operating system is open to penetration and attack. So the idea is that you know things like drivers, if they're broken, they can just be restarted and you don't get ownership of the entire Beam so they're sort of off to the side. That's the rough idea. Um, what was really interesting about this was they had to basically implement a whole bunch of things that microkernel did not implement. So you can see that down the bottom, key threads, file system, all these positive calls. Um, they had to sort of instrument what was called out to and implement those themselves. Uh, Zach, did a lightning talk, which I don't think will be videoed and it's sort of in person only. He's talking about the satisfiability solver for doing uh, policy authorization um, solving in the app framework. Um, this was another thing that was pretty interesting. I don't know if anyone's seen this, but I hadn't seen it before. But basically, what this does, Ecto P SQL extras gives you a way to instrument lots of interesting things about your database, um, including its long run queries, index hits, all that kind of stuff. Um, I hadn't seen that before, and it gives you a little live dashboard hook in as well, which is quite nice. So if you need to find out what's going on with your database, check that out. Um, there was another interesting talk by a student who'd been comparing Python machine learning and you know doing machine learning training with NX. And it was pretty interesting that the speed was extremely slow without NX. So the first line got 30 seconds training time or no 30,000 European notation. So 30,000 seconds to do training without NX and with it it's 20 seconds. Um, Comparable to Python and Keras. So that's pretty exciting that, you know, the whole machine learning in Elixir with NX is coming along rapidly. Um, this is Boyd's keynote talking more about what I talked about before. Um, you know, his whole thing has sort of been maybe five or six years in the making. The scenic was intended to be a UI for IoT devices, but um, his platform actually allows you to write to a canvas. It's just a drawing framework. So you could either write to a screen of the device screen, or you could write to the canvas in WebGL or the web canvas. And he uses that to get remote uh, UIs for IoT devices. Pretty cool. And so he's sort of basically launching his whole thing that's been working on for five or six years, which I think is a pretty exciting use of the beam. And that was all the things I had to talk about.